Hi everyone, this is Patria Calindres, your favorite lactation consultant and registered dietitian. Hi, I hope everyone is doing well and staying, say, staying safe. Sorry, I got a little tongue tied there. Um, I know it's been really, really stressful, but I wanted to actually create a video today about COVID-19 and breastfeeding and kind of just tell you all um, what the statistics are, what have been the recommendations. Um, I know a lot of us are scared. We are, we are scared as moms and parents, you know, are, are very scared right now. We don't know what's going on. Um, but let me just tell you solidarity. You guys are not alone in this. Uh, most of our work has been affected. My work has been affected. Most of us are now stay-at-home parents or stay-at-home parenting, which um, again, hats off to the stay-at-home moms who have been doing this for months and months and months. And this is not their first rodeo. You guys are, I mean, you guys have always been my superheroes, but now living it, I'm like, holy geez Louise. <laughs> you just never know <laughs> what people are going through until you yourself are there. So, um, but I do wanna talk a little bit today about COVID-19 and breastfeeding. Again, this is really, this is, this is new. This has been unprecedented in our lifetimes. Um, so the research is very, very cutting edge. It's, you know, again, more will develop as, as the disease progresses or the virus progresses. So I just wanted to tell you what best practices are right now. And before I get started, I just kind of want to give this disclaimer. I am not a doctor. I am a lactation consultant and a dietitian. I am in the healthcare field, but I'm not a doctor and I'm not your doctor. So if you guys have any concerns or direct questions, um, this is just gonna be general information. I don't know your specific situation. So please, 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 if you do have any direct concerns, if you have any um, other illnesses, you know, maybe you're pregnant or maybe you have gestational diabetes or maybe your kiddo is, you know, I don't know. I don't know what your specific situation is. So all of that being said, it's just gonna be general information that has been brought out by um, the, medical, the medical world. So please just take that with a piece, and, piece of salt or you know, a little bit of salt and talk to your personal healthcare provider because you have that relationship with them directly and they're going to know. So all of that being said, let me just get right into it. So as we all know, COVID-19, it's a viral infection. Um, it's a lot like flu, at least it has some of those flu-like symptoms. Um, the biggest difference right now, you know, they are both viral, but with uh, COVID-19 is we don't currently really have any vaccination against it like we do kind of the flu uh, that helps prevent. Um, also, it does have a little bit higher of a comorbidity or not comorbidity, a uh, mortality rating, which means um, more people that do contract it usually, especially if they have other disease states um, or they have a lower immune system, they, it can be a little bit more fatal but there is good news so don't you know all the parents out there don't start freaking out the good news is as of right now that the child infantile range is a little bit like them actually getting the disease or the virus has been a little bit lower so that's great that's really really good news so let me start off with pregnancy so what we have found with pregnancy um, one question that has been asked and and just so you know let me give you a disclaimer as well all my information has been um, gotten from the World Health Organization, the WHO, as I like to call them, the CDC, as well as the American Breastfeeding Medicine, or ABM. So any of my any of my resources that I'm utilizing today, I'm going to make sure that we post as well so you guys can read directly and get the information for yourself because I think that's really important. Um, but back to my first question or my first statement. So pregnancy. A lot of women have been asking, asking me or been wondering that if they're pregnant, if they're more likely to contract the, the virus. As of right now, we don't have any evidence to support yes or no. So that's, you know, again, we would just say do your best standard practices right now, which is, you know, kind of self-quarantining, making sure that you're not around a lot of people, hand washing. I know you guys have heard about that hand washing a million times. Um, you know, if you're going to use hand sanitizer, use 45 to 60% alcohol. So take those safety measures um, and really just don't gather with anyone else other than your family. And if you have those older, make sure that you're not hanging out with those that are older. But if you're pregnant, protect yourself and your unborn child, right? So I'm not saying that you need to go full down lockdown, but you know, keep your family members close to you. Maybe don't invite friends or family over, friends or family over that are maybe extended and just keep it to what we call that nuclear family, which I kind of hate that term, but you guys know what I'm trying to say here. Um, but as of right now, you know, the research does not say that if you're pregnant, you're going to get sick. Um, it doesn't say that you're, you know, you're not at higher, any higher risk than anybody else. Just if you are pregnant, what we do know is that you typically are a little bit more in that fragile period. So just be sure to have that heightened 
awareness and make sure that you're taking care of those shelves and doing those procedures, those, those safety protocols, as it were, that I just mentioned. So that is the biggest thing. Second question is, well, what if I do have COVID-19 and I am pregnant? Um, you know, is my baby at risk to have COVID-19? As of right now, we there's no indication, okay? So what we've seen, and again, this is actually one of those big question marks is, oh, well, I can't really answer it too well. Um, but what I can say is that in amniotic fluid and in breast milk, there has been no viral infection for those that are pregnant with the disease and have given birth. So, um, you know, we don't know. Uh, it doesn't look like it's being passed in utero, so that's fabulous. Um, but again, too, no, more research needs to be done on that, so I can't give you a definitive. Like I said, a lot of this is up and coming. This is a new, new, this is all new. Um, so as that changes, we'll definitely give some updates on that, just so you guys are aware. So third question is, can I breastfeed and have COVID-19, you know, during everything now, is that a good is that a good idea? So let's start if you, I said if you have COVID-19, let's start if you don't have COVID-19. If you don't have COVID-19 and you just gave a baby, breastfeeding is going to be your best number one thing to do. Please, 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 please breastfeed. And I mean directly breastfeeding. So um, we'll talk about pumping here in a second. There is a place for pumping in all of this, but with if you can directly breastfeed your baby, please do so a little bit more frequently. There's something to be said about bringing to your baby to the breast. There's actually an exchange from your skin to their mouth of saliva and your body, your body, not the baby's body, your body will actually make antibodies for your kiddo through that exchange of hormones and bacteria and will actually produce it through the breast milk. So literally you're, what basically happens is your baby latches onto your breast has this exchange from saliva to your glands on your breast because you do have glands on your breast and then your body who has all that healthy immunity will then make um, pretty much medication so to speak you know medication in quotation marks um, to so your body your baby will actually not hopefully get that disease and will produce antibodies in the breast milk so that's why direct breastfeeding is so very vitally important at this time um, your body, your body, your mom, moms are amazing guys, seriously, but your, your motherhood body um, will actually help protect your baby. So please, as much as you can, um, directly bring your baby to the breast. Even if you're not breastfeeding, I would still tell you to do tons and tons and tons of skin to skin. Um, first of all, yes, hold your baby. Who doesn't want to do that during times like these or if you have a new, newborn in general. Um, but if you have, if you weren't planning on breastfeeding, or if you are breastfeeding in general, please do tons of skin to skin. Uh, what is skin to skin? Let me define what that is first, guys. So skin to skin is exactly what it sounds like. Naked chest, naked baby, maybe a diaper on the baby because a lot of us don't want to have urine <laughs> or have the baby pee on us any way, shape, or form. Um, but have the baby just lay on your chest, like lay, you know, lean the head out a little bit and maybe put a little um, you know, blanket or towel or something, whatever you have, across your body and keep that body warmth on you too. So the benefits of that is, that again, first of all, it does help promote breastfeeding if that is your, your goal, which again, we are with, you know, we're talking all about breastfeeding today, so I'm assuming it's probably your goal. Second, it does actually increase your, your uh, milk-making hormone. Oxytocin is one of your milk-making hormones, and just, you know, having a constant hug will bring up that love, that love hormone, as we like to call it. But also, it does help with that exchange of just, you know, you understanding your baby, your baby understanding you, and then you guys are in close proximity together. Again, your body will be able, not as directly as if your baby puts their mouth on your breast, but have an idea, hopefully to an extent, of maybe some certain antibodies that your baby will need. Okay, so if you don't have COVID-19, if you're planning on breastfeeding, if you just have a newborn, tons and tons and tons of skin to skin. If I have to put an hour amount on it, I tell all my new mommies six to eight hours a day, a day, and I'm not even, and that's in a normal day. That's not even when this all is going on. With this all going on right now, I could even say 10 hours to, you know, just watch some Netflix, put on your baby, call it a day, okay? Um, so, you know, same protocols, everything's going good. If you do, if you don't have COVID-19, breastfeed on demand, whatever your baby wants it, like crazy, okay? So what about if you do have COVID-19 and you just have a baby? So again, as of right now, and this is from the WHO, the World Health Organization, protocol and ABM, the American Breastfeeding Medicine or Academy, or the Academy of Breastfeeding Medicine, sorry, I kind of butchered that a little bit. 
Um, but right now the recommendations are to still directly breastfeed your baby, okay? So the biggest difference are if you do have COVID-19, um, to wear a face mask and you're going to really need to practice those cleansing protocols. So even before you hold your baby, I need you to wash your hands at least for 20 seconds. And that's singing ABCs twice, okay? Um, go to the CDC's hand, uh, page, they tell you how to do proper hand washing. Um, you guys wanna go like this, then you wanna go like this, see how my thumbs are crossed, then you wanna go like this, you wanna go down to your wrists. There's a lot of things that you need to do for proper hand washing. Make sure that you're doing those protocols, okay? And I always am right now very much singing ABCs twice um, out loud, especially since I have a four-year-old, so I need him to get excited about washing his hands. Um, we, we, have some, we have some work to do there. He is not the, the best hand washer quite yet. Um, but of course, wash your hands before you hold your baby, put on that face max. You know, if you want to kind of wash around here, that should be okay as well. Um, but they still are right now recommending, uh, some skin to skin and absolutely directly breastfeeding your baby. Okay. If you are rooming in, so you're in the hospital, um, and what rooming in is exactly what it sounds like guys. It's when your baby is in the room with you. Um, it, there's not, it's not indicated right now that your baby should go to the nursery, just given everything that's going on. And if you do are positive for COVID-19, it's not indication that your baby should go to the nursery. Rooming in is still, um, the golden standard. That's still the protocol. That should be the protocols in your hospital. I don't know. Um, however, what is recommended is that the baby stay about six feet away from you. And again, with that skin to skin, what I talked about earlier, if there's someone else that can do that skin to skin for you, that would be the recommendation who is not positive for COVID-19. So mom, say you're positive and you're washing your hands, you breastfeed the baby, and then maybe you have a significant other with you, you know, maybe your wife or your husband or what have you, um, and they're not positive for COVID-19, please allow them to do that skin to skin that we just discussed and do it for a very long time. And then whenever the baby is ready to eat again, to pass him or her back to you. Okay, so those are really the biggest differences. So yes, you can still breastfeed, wear that facial mask, uh, you know, make sure you're clean <laughs> every single time. And skin to skin is still recommended, but preferably by someone that's not positive for COVID-19. And yes, rooming in, but at least six feet away. So that's kind of the, the bare and dirty right there. If you are very, very sick um, and right now cannot be around a baby, because you maybe do have COVID-19, um, but still do want to have milk for your baby, your own breast milk, then pumping is absolutely indicated. You can pump and give your baby your breast milk and we want you to do that. If you're going to pump, you do need to make sure, again, same protocols, uh, washing your hands, making sure everything is clean, and you have to make sure that your pump is not been is very, very, very clean. We don't want to have a, um, a messy pump and be pumping. We want to make sure that we're very much cleaning our pump parts every single time, probably before and after. So the CDC goes into great detail about the proper protocols in washing a pump. Um, you know, the down, again, the down and dirty. I'm just giving you guys the cliff notes on everything today. Um, again, like I said, we're going to be posting everything that I'm discussing today so you can kind of look over yourself. Um, but the biggest deal is to make sure that before you kind of give all the materials a wipe down, um, you know, using a sanitizing wipe or something like that. And then afterward, you need to deeply clean your pump every single time. And usually this is just for NICU kiddos is usually this protocol. But right now, the recommendations are for everybody to use these protocols. So immediately after you pump, you break down your pump, you take apart all the different pump parts, and you need to clean them all either by hand in boiling water for about five minutes, or if you guys have any of those sanitizer bags that you can put in the microwave, those all work as sanitizing as well. So of course you want to get your breast milk out of out of the bottles and everything before you do any of this. But it is very important each time you pump, which if you have a newborn, that's at least 10 times, eight to 10 times. Honestly, guys, I tell my moms who are newborn with newborns at least 12 times a day. So it's going to be a lot of times. <laughs> um, so please have some help that you have around, maybe your mother-in-law, father-in-law, aunt, uncle, I don't know, helping you out because Right now, especially if you are sick, you're not feeling the best, you're gonna be drained and that's okay, but you're gonna need some help to do all this to make sure that your baby is as healthy as they can be. So that's the biggest points for you guys today is yes, keep on breastfeeding, please, 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 as much as you can. Um, if you're pumping, please wash your pump very thoroughly and we'll, we'll go ahead and post all of that so you guys are aware of that. Um, thank you.
Mm -hmm. Um, Another thing too, uh, if you guys are breastfeeding and you're worried that you don't have enough right now, I would recommend um, a lot of right now telehealth is a okay to utilize. There's, you know, sometimes there's been some um, barriers to access is what we would call it. But right now the White House has pretty much done a clear all for telehealth. So please reach out to a lactation consultant if you're worried about your milk supply. Um, we can do a lot via the internet nowadays. Um, I've done myself a lot of telehealth for lactation specifically. And so please, you know, and we'll, uh, we'll figure out some resources for you. So please reach out if you have any questions on how to get connected to somebody who can help you with that. Um, but I mentioned that because first of all, we're very, we're a little bit more isolated than normal. Um, which, you know, I think is a great opportunity to use tech, but at the same time too, it's not great for a new mom to feel like they have no support. So I do want you guys to know that you're, oh, please reach out. Like I said, contact me, contact somebody, we'll find you people to connect to. Um, but beyond that too, a lot of times mothers are able to make an appropriate milk supply. We're just scared and we're already all scared right now, given everything that's going on in our world. So don't let that anxiety add to your own new mom anxiety. And right now would be the perfect time to reach out to those that can absolutely help you. And third is we know that there's shortages going on not only of toilet paper, (laughs) but I've actually seen people that are unable to get formula. And I think this is a really important time, which, you know, some people are formula feeding, that is your decision. But if you, and some babies do need formula and formula is great, not as good as breast milk, but it's fine. Um, But if you are just stockpiling, because we're just stockpiling and worried, I don't, you know, maybe let's do, maybe grab what you need if you need it, but please reach out to somebody else to make sure that we can't increase your milk supply naturally is what I'm trying to say. I, I hope that came off correctly. I'm not saying don't feed formula, always feed your baby, but my biggest thing is, you know, let's try to increase your own milk supply first. I would say this regardless of COVID-19 or not, but especially given the circumstances and how powerful breast milk is, um, you know, formula is never gonna have antibodies in it formula is never going to be able to change day to day like breast milk is for your own particular baby. So really try, I mean, this is, this is the time to really reach out to professionals to help make sure that your milk supply is as, as much as it needs to be. And also, um, I've seen some Facebook posts about making your own formula. Um, please, 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 please don't make your own formula. Um, this is the dietitian and lactation consultant speaking in, in for me. Um, our baby's tummies are very, very, very special and they're very fragile. And it is not right to make your own formula because if we get anything wrong, it can really harm your baby. And the hospital systems are already going to be over flooded right now, just given what's going on. Please don't add, please don't add. Um, If you need anything, seriously, anything to feed your baby, I am here for you. I will help you. (laughs) Um, So please reach out. We will figure this out together. We want everyone to succeed. I'm gonna be like a little teary-eyed here. Um, I'm I'm being honest. We, you you moms are not alone. We're here for you. You can do this, okay? So uh, that's just kind of my public, my PSA for today. Um, Overall, I hope you guys are, are staying really safe. Any questions, any comments, please post. I am here to hear from you and help you guide through these difficult times. So um, that's all I really have today. Um, you know, please, please reach out. Let's let's start that social community, okay? Um, anyway, thanks so much. Like I said, I'm Petra. I am your favorite, that should be my tagline, your favorite lactation consultant and registered dietitian. Thanks guys, bye.